see all of you here on our today's session and i i hope it will be interesting and uh, useful for you so let me share my screen yeah today's topic it's uh, play away from zero to hero how to extend devops to your databases and uh, uh, today we are uh, going to discuss how to increase uh, our uh, deployments reliability uh, by version in our database and uh, cover the next question uh, why we need database migration first of all uh, version it and repeatable migration how it uh, looks uh, this is type of migration yeah how does flyback work a uh, list of supported databases uh, by this tool right now uh, also share some tips and tricks uh, for using flyway in real life uh, taken from my uh, experience and then we will have small uh, demo and q a session uh, so, first of all, briefly about me. Mm, my name is Siu Han. I am uh, at this moment I'm working in COE as uh, lead DevOps engineer. I have been working in IT uh, over 15 years and have a lot of experience in uh, application modernization, in container orchestration, and in infrastructure configuration. Um, my expertise also includes knowledge of many, if, if not uh, most aspects of uh, cloud infrastructure based by, by uh, GCP platform. And I'm really fond of uh, containers, Kubernetes, CI CD tools, and uh, Google Cloud platform. And uh, so that's why I, uh, I uh, gathered all available certification from that provider. So let's start. Uh, first question, why we need to have this migration for our databases? Uh, let's start from the beginning and imagine that uh, we have a project called Awesome. And this project consists of a piece of software called uh, Awesome Soft. And this soft uh, should interact with a, a database called Awesome DB. Uh, the simplest diagram represents this uh, could uh, looks like this. We have our uh, software part, we have our database part, and great. But uh, as you may already know, uh, this simple diagram in real life uh, transforms in something like this. So uh, now we uh, not have... Uh, uh, to deal with uh, just one copy of our environment, but with several ones. And uh, this presents a number of challenges for us. Uh, we, uh, to be honest, we have been uh, pretty good on solving these challenges on the like uh, version control side, uh, the part of, in this case, awesome soft, yeah, because uh, for version control, we we use uh, uh, some system to track changes in our code base. Yeah, we have configured continuous integration and uh, can easily reproduce our builds. And we have, or at least uh, we should have a uh, well-defined uh, release creation and uh, deployment process. But uh, what about databases? To be honest, we are not so well there because many projects in real life still rely on manually applied SQL scripts or maybe queries performed on a database in real time. And here is the many question arise. For example, what state is the database in on this current machine? Yeah, Has the script already been applied or not in production? or maybe has the quick fix uh, uh, in production been applied into test or uh, lower environments uh, afterwards, yeah? Uh, how can I set up new version of database, for example, for testing purpose on my local machine, yeah? And uh, all this question, uh, uh, like related to why we uh, need to have these database migrations. So we can say that database uh, migrations uh, allow us to recreate database from scratch, uh, for example, for testing, yeah? Uh, 
also it help us answer the question what state uh, the database is in uh, in the current environment or current machine uh, also we can uh, like migrate in uh, uh, deterministic way from current version of the database to a newer one and as a result uh, we can increase the reliability of our deployment uh, and uh, it's uh, usually it's uh, one of the business goals in our project uh, so uh, let's uh, deep dive uh, and discuss the type of migration uh, that are used in uh, flyway uh, with flyway all changes uh, to the database called migrations uh, migrations uh, could be written in uh, Java or SQL, but uh, the most uh, commonly is written in uh, SQL. Uh, migration uh, also could be versioned or repeatable. Uh, for versioned migrations, we can say that uh, it's the most common type of migrations, and uh, they uh, are applied exactly once in strict order to the database. Uh, version migrations uh, have usually have a version, a description, and a checksum. We will discuss this a little bit later. And uh, this migration uh, typically used for creating, altering, dropping table, maybe some reference data updates, uh, user data correction, etc. And uh, right now we can see the example of uh, version migration. If we speak about repeatable migrations, uh, they usually have a description and checksum, but no version. Uh, and uh, instead of being uh, run just uh, once, this repeatable migration reapplied every time uh, when uh, their checksum uh, changes. Uh, also, we can say that uh, with a single uh, migration run, uh, repeatable migrations are always applied last after uh, all version at migrations. Um, uh, repeatable migrations have no version and that's why they uh, apply it in the order of their description. It's you know, like, could be important in, in your project. And uh, this migration typically used for uh, recreating some kind of views, procedures, functions, and so on. And example we can see on our screen. Uh, if we speak about uh, some naming convention for these uh, files with migration, uh, file name should consist with a prefix. It's letter V for version at migrations and uh, letter R for repeatable. Uh, version at migrations uh, also have its version, but uh, not it's not applicable for uh, repeatable migration. Uh, then we should have a separator and uh, by default it's uh, two underscores. Uh, also, migrations should have a description and uh, description should contain some kind of uh, information about uh, what each migration uh, exactly does. And uh, the last part of uh, this migration file name uh, should be a suffix. In our case, it'd be uh, .sql. Uh, now we are ready to discuss uh, how the flyway works. Easy scenario is when you point flyway to an empty database. It will try to locate a schema history table and uh, the database is empty, Flyway uh, won't find uh, the schema uh, table and uh, create schema instead. Uh, uh, now we can uh, have uh, something like this in our database uh, with a uh, single uh, empty table uh, called, uh, by default, it's called uh, Flyway Schema History. Uh, this table uh, will be used uh, to track uh, the changes uh, in our database. Immediately after creation this uh, schema history table, Flyway will begin scanning a uh, file system uh, or application class pass and uh, try to find uh, some migration written in uh, SQL or as I said before in Java. 
uh, then Flyway compare uh, all these migrations uh, that uh, have been applied uh, already to our database. And uh, if any difference between uh, applied migration and migration on your, uh, I know, laptop, class pass, or file system, uh, will uh, if any difference is found, uh, uh, Flyway will migrate uh, database to close this gap. Uh, the migrations sorted uh, based on their version and uh, applied in a strict order. Uh, as each migration gets applied, uh, the schema history table updated also, and we will see this in our uh, demo later. And uh, we can uh, assume that every time we need to involve the database rises, whether structure, reference data, uh, we need to simply create a new migration with a higher version uh, that was before. And uh, next time Flyway uh, runs, uh, starts, runs, uh, it will find this uh, new uh, migration and apply it, uh, upgrade our database accordingly. Uh, this behavior could be achieved with uh, many databases because uh, Flyway allow us to use uh, a wide range of databases and some of them you can see uh, on our script right now. Uh, in our demo, we will use uh, Postgres. Uh, basically, it will be Cloud SQL on Google, but uh, under the hood, it will be Postgres. Uh, also, I can say that uh, this list of database continuously increases. So you can, uh, you can monitor and wait maybe uh, some database that uh, right now is not on the list. Uh, also, I promise to share some tips and tricks with you from my real life uh, using Flyway. Uh, first of all, I could recommend uh, for version and migration, uh, use uh, formatted timestamp. It's uh, really easy and you can uh, like use a date command in Linux to, to have this formatted timestamp and just put it uh, into file name. Whether you use uh, IntelliJ IDEA, uh, you can find and use plugin called uh, Flyway Migration Creation. Uh, also, um, if you want to, for example, implement uh, this uh, version migrations for existing uh, database, uh, you need to perform uh, more steps. Uh, first of all, you need to create uh, SQL script that uh, already contains uh, all entire uh, DDL statements. I mean, uh, indexes, triggers, procedures, and so on uh, uh, in, in current database. Uh, this could be done like uh, for Postgres, for example, it could be done with command uh, pg dump. Yeah. Uh, uh, then uh, from that script, you could create uh, migration with relevant version number and description and then uh, you should invoke uh, flyway baseline command it's a separate command uh, not flyway migrate yeah uh, flyway uh, baseline command uh, introducing flyway to existing database baselining them uh, at a specific version that uh, could be written in a uh, migration uh, file name uh, as a version after letter V. Uh, also, it's uh, commonly used uh, since in Highload project, uh, when you perform migration on like altering table or something like this, to avoid table locking, sometimes you should write migration in, in following format. So first of all, we like uh, revoke connection privilege uh, to some database uh, from a set of users, yeah, then close all active connection, except our connection, of course, uh, then perform uh, this uh, migration, yeah, for, for database. And uh, as the last step, uh, we should uh, like uh, grant uh, our con uh, connection privileges back to users from the first step. 
Uh, so, uh, before we proceed uh, to our demo, I want to show the simplest diagram and uh, quickly describe what exactly we will see in a few moments. Uh, I created in my own GCP project uh, uh, Cloud SQL in instance with Postgres under the hood and uh, Cloud Build Triggers, which uh, will be used uh, to apply migrations to that uh, Cloud SQL instance using a uh, Docker container with uh, flyway inside. Uh, also, this trigger uh, configured to track changes in uh, master branch in uh, relevant GitHub repo, and we will see this also. Uh, and uh, additionally, uh, on pull request creation in uh, our GitHub repository is configured uh, GitHub action, which will uh, uh, be used for validating migration, uh, testing, validating migration uh, using file uh, test containers uh, before we merge these uh, changes to our trunk or like master branch. Uh, so let's switch to our demo. Uh, here uh, we can see that we have this SQL instance called Postgres instance, not rocket science. Uh, we have two empty databases and uh, several users. We will uh, use these users uh, called Flyway for applying migration. Uh, a row and test users we will use in our immigration examples just to grant some permissions to, to tables created in our database. Uh, here we uh, see this trigger that I uh, briefly described before. And uh, right now we can uh, like connect to our instance and uh, just to validate that uh, there is no public scheme and there is no tables that uh, we will uh, see in a few moments. Uh, uh, now, uh, we have uh, several migrations uh, already committed to uh, our repo and uh, just for like initializing our database we can run uh, our trigger choosing a correct branch and uh, some variables run trigger in uh, yeah and this like additional uh, uh, additional steps that I uh, introduced, I need to manually approve uh, any migrations. It's maybe in this case on our demo is just for fun, but sometimes in real uh, project it could be useful. Uh, after approving, uh, this will run, and we can like monitor or read some logs in stream usually it takes maybe around one minute to to perform this operation And uh, as you can see in our logs, uh, the first message was like flyway schema history does not exist. And uh, flyway creates this table to track changes in, in the next row. Yeah. And uh, then apply uh, three migrations to, to our database. And uh, right now we can like check our those database, public schema, and here we see this uh, flyway schema, schema's history, which exactly contains three rows with our migration base uh, migration, then some kind of migration that grants uh, permission to a row user, and uh, another one that uh, create 
invoice table and here we have these tables as you can see and uh, right now uh, imagine we want to like commit or add one more uh, migration one more table it's not committed yet and we will like add uh, this into our repository Looks like I pushed it to master. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, right now we have another trigger here, and after approving, uh, we can have uh, like one more table in our um, database. So yeah, this immigration uh, already applied, and uh, in our Levi's Hemas history, we we have one more row about uh, several table uh, separate table traces, and I believe we will see this table also. Here is it, and uh, now just to show the uh, possibility to validate our migration during uh, pull request. Uh, I create uh, another one migration, uh, change version just to uh, ensure that this migration will be applied last in our case. And uh, right now I'll commit this migration. Input test branch. I'm too lazy to like type this. That's why I'm trying to, to just copy. <laughs> so, and here when we create pull request, uh, one check run, and in details of this check, we can see. Uh, uh, how this performed validation for our migration yeah it's uh, i'll show configuration for this step uh, in our uh, repository uh, right now we just like uh, want to ensure that uh, we will see how it should be tested in uh, test containers during our pull request While we're waiting, uh, I, I'll show you right now how it looks, this configuration. So for uh, for our checks on pull request, we use uh, GitHub Actions. It's a really simple uh, step 
running on Ubuntu latest. We check out our repo. We want to use uh, Java, exactly Temurin and the 17th version. Uh, one additional step that we perform, we like uh, grant execute permission to Gradle script. And with Gradle, just run a command test. Uh, our project using Java and Gradle. And uh, this command really tests our changes. And uh, yep, here, here it is. We can scroll down to real testing because first of all, it's downloads test containers. Uh, uh, pull this image layers, uh, initial A's, and then, uh, yeah, this one. Uh, this is uh, real testing for our uh, DB1. Yeah, it's each migration is applied in uh, current uh, order. It will be defined uh, using versioning, yeah? And this is the last one. And uh, looks like we are good with this uh, migration. We have no typo in this migration, and uh, we can uh, like apply this migration in our let's say production after merging, yeah, merging this pull request into master, and uh, then like uh, approving this cloud build configuration. Uh, while cloud build uh, like uh, applying this configuration, I'll show you uh, which exactly configure it to do this cloud build file. It's also simple. Uh, we use Docker container with uh, flyway inside and use uh, a command migrate. Uh, the maybe most interesting thing we use uh, some environment variables like flyway user, flyway password, flyway URL. Uh, these environment variables uh, comes to us uh, from Terraform. Uh, I uh, created all my infrastructure with Terraform and that's why it's useful and easy to configure this cloud build. And also we uh, like uh, mount inside this Docker container, we mount a directory which contains our migrations uh, and we should uh, point this directory with our migration on uh, file system to uh, exact directory in uh, our Docker container. It's uh, called Flyway SQL by default. And uh, as you see, uh, maybe in one minute, this uh, applies. Oh, now it's ha ha half a minute. Yeah, uh, applied uh, migration. And we can uh, like see one more role here in our uh, schema version table, which exactly describes uh, uh, shows us like version, description, type of migration, and 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 so on. Uh, that's mainly it. I can uh, maybe add just. Uh, just uh, we use Gradle for this project and uh, only test implementation. And uh, the most interesting thing here it's uh, uh, import test containers, yeah, with Postgres. And for this testing, we have this simple, really simple class with uh, initialization uh, container and performing some uh, testing, like using flyway migrate command. Uh, all this stuff is available in uh, my GitHub repo, so uh, feel free to like use and investigate and use in your uh, project, maybe just for fun or for, for real life. And uh, looks like we can, uh, ah, yeah, here I have some useful links for you maybe uh, you will be interested in its uh, flyway documentation. Uh, I also, I have several articles 
uh, on uh, my own blog about Flyway and uh, of course link to my uh, repository with it. So and now looks like it's time to Q&A session. So if you have some questions, I try to sure. answer. Hello. Hello. Uh, so uh, I'm interested in with uh, with uh, in your pipeline. Actually, you have created a uh, um, full request with uh, changes to migrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and applied uh, some checks using GitHub Actions, right? Yep. Yep. But exactly. what? Uh, Actually, you are testing with with those with the tool Gradle. Is it Gradle tool? Uh, okay. Uh, with the Gradle tool. Uh, yep. Yeah. Here, uh, we have in this project Java, but we have mm -hmm. only tests, not uh, not real like code. Yeah, but just only test, and we can see it's uh, by location. We have uh, source, test, mm -hmm. Java, uh, package name, and uh, only one class, yeah? And uh, when we invoke Gradle test, uh, mm -hmm. should be executed exactly this uh, file. Maybe you will have uh, more files in this directory, and all of them should be like executed during a uh, Gradle test. But uh, in, in our case, we have only one, and this one uh, like uh, have some uh, defined variables, yeah? yeah. With these variables and uh, script pass, script uh, in initialize script pass, it's pretty simple because we need firstly create some users and database to apply migrations or some changes in that database, yeah. And uh, uh, we have this predefined uh, scenes like. Uh, which version of Postgres, which pass of to to this uh, init script we'll use. With these mm -hmm. variables, we initialize the test container instance under the hood. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty looks like a running Docker instance. Yes. Uh, yes, and and then we like uh, uh, run migration on this uh, instance yeah uh, on uh, schema public and we uh, like uh, provide pass to these migrations and uh, this is exactly this one folder migration oh. yeah? and in in this folder migration uh, uh -huh. with uh, like test we we should have uh, code yeah and we we should have resources and in resources uh -huh. i i placed uh, folder with migration and uh, I separate this to several database just to show this possibility yeah and uh, in resources also I have this initialized script yeah and so actually uh, yeah, sorry uh, actually you are testing that uh, your migration uh, migrations will be applied correctly before the real before we yes. will apply it to real environment yes correctly. exactly yes because it's from my own real uh, experience uh, uh, sometimes developers make uh, typos in, in these migrations. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, just mm -hmm. maybe forgot semicolon or something like this. Yeah, and migration looks like good, but uh, this semicolon uh, mm -hmm. will fail when you try to apply it in production and it's always set. And that's why I like implemented this additional layer of security okay. and try to validate uh, at least. Uh, correctness in 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 this uh cool. like in, in this migrations yeah understood thank you mm -hmm. i have a small question uh Johan, thanks for interesting presentation could you please return back to slide before demo uh slide before demo this one uh, uh, and one before one before this one yeah mm -hmm. uh -huh. and uh it is this uh, script uh, taken from some best practice page or uh, it your invention to use revoke connections and uh, uh, grant back to be honest uh, it uh, my like own uh, inventions but i i don't know that it's uh, like rocket science because 
maybe I Google and uh, just to like uh, uh, make I, some, I, some uh -huh, I see. Uh, I just uh, wanted to ask about uh, exactly about this revoke and grant back. Uh, does it mean that uh, on period of time when uh, you are rolling out changes, uh, users will not be able to connect to the database? Yes, exactly. And yes. Uh, uh, what uh, in case if uh, uh they script fail in in between re revoke and grant uh, will grant statement be executed or uh, users will not be able to connect back uh, that's why we uh, use this uh, like validation stage just uh -huh. to ensure that uh, migration part will be applied and uh, I can see that uh, real applying this migration uh, took maybe a few seconds. And for a few seconds, you can like revoke connection privilege from a user. It's uh, it's okay. But if you like uh, don't revoke this privilege, sometimes migrations stuck in, in several hours. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, case, off, uh, yeah, in that case, it's really hard to manage uh, because you want to firstly like uh, um, stop uh, exact runs of this migration. Yeah, then you should uh, manually clean up your uh, flyway migration schema table uh, just to like uh, be, be ensure that uh, in another start, this migration also at least try to be applied. Yeah, so and uh, from time to time it happens in my in my life and that's that's why uh, like uh, mm, this this crunch <laughs> was born <laughs> i see uh okay thanks for explanation any other questions i have a question uh, uh, to the, in in real life uh, we have the situation when uh, we have to stop application and then uh, run a flyway process or we um, or there are uh, some me mechanism uh, which um, uh, can do flyways uh, with working uh, application um we don't have such mechanism but uh, uh, i got your message and uh, of course from my experience uh, usually developers uh, write uh, application soft application code uh, with uh, with backward compatibilities in mind so uh, some piece of code deployed firstly before applying this migration and this piece of code can work with like current or maybe previous version of uh, database and uh, in the same time this code could also work with like newer one and then we like uh, apply migration and uh, this code uh, exactly starts work with only like newer one uh, or version of database it's uh, um, more or less on like uh, developer's side yeah but uh, I, I don't know maybe in good teams, developers should care about this uh, backward compatibility. I may comment on this as I am Java developer. Uh, the good practice, uh, usually developers have to roll out uh, flyway changes in first uh, pull request. And only when uh, these changes already apply to all environments, only then merge changes related to uh, code and uh, hibernate mapping and so on and so forth just to be sure that uh, Jenkins jobs passes well uh, with new code and uh, with existing database structure yep yep makes sense okay thank you for a uh, perfect explanation no more questions from my side maybe someone I... has yep yes I have uh, I have a question about the rollback. Does it the, the flyaway tool support the rollbacks? Uh, yes. Uh, there is a command called flyaway undo, but this command uh, is available only in the paid subscription of flyaway. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, of course it's uh, not the like all money in the world but if you want to use uh, absolutely free uh, flyway version yeah you like could create another migration with like roll back your changes but it will be free or you you should pay some amount of money and use uh, flyway uh, under mm -hmm. uh, like migration yeah so to roll back uh the it, it, so there the, there is a workaround yeah? and for that workaround i need to uh write another migration which uh I'll, i can actually will roll back my previous changes right right yep 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 oh interesting and actually uh about migrations itself do the, the, like uh are devops responsible for for writing tables like a db structure or describing database structure with uh tables the the type of fields etc cetera, etc cetera. or okay. or uh, all those uh, things were presented just for the for the demo uh, these scenes uh was taken from one of my previous projects but uh, it's of course cut it and uh, simplified but uh, regarding your question uh, usually uh, developers create uh, such kind of uh, migrations uh, but as a devops uh, i think it uh, it would be good to like uh, have some understand it rules, how <laughs> them understand it and how mm -hmm. it should work and uh, mm -hmm. something gone wrong so you you should like uh, uh, interrupt and maybe fix something yes. it's just for our should... knowledge if, yes if some something uh, is so uh, when uh, like, uh, will will go wrong you need to uh be fast enough to write a rollback, right? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. And, 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 and apply it with flyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. So maybe one more. Mm, I have I have a, I have one comment. Uh, oh, typically we have to uh, cause I had some uh, experience with uh, flyway. Typically we have to uh, make uh, some flyway test on the uh, production snapshot and they did uh, it prevent us from uh, errors on uh, production migrations that, that's all yeah yeah it could be but uh, uh, if you have time or maybe if you're interested in try to use test containers for this and uh, with uh, all of these uh, like migrations in strict order uh, you can uh, easily in in few seconds spin up these test containers under the hood and tests, and uh, maybe you save some some amount of time or money uh, instead of using snapshot. Okay, in in my practice, uh, that uh, something can happen on a production amount of uh, of data, and it uh, tests also um, validation of. Uh, of uh, file flyway migrations and uh, how many time it uh, it uh, can happen because we have uh, for example some uh, maintenance window and we have to uh, know if uh, this uh, scripts uh, happen with within one hour or six hour and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to plan uh, production changes i mean um I mean, uh, the, the, from from this reason, I I know that uh, uh, testing in containers uh, with uh, small amount of data is uh, fastly and uh, save the time. However, for mm, I I would say enterprise uh, environment, it would be uh, uh, good to to safely test. Uh, uh, test the data, test migration uh, near to production state with uh, all uh, all data. Yep, yep. I agree with you. It may make sense. 